Before we start importing and working with audio, I want to show you how to set up your audio interface for recording and playback. Before you create your song, you can actually set up your audio interface here in the start page, but if you've already created your song, you can do it from here too. Just go up to Studio One, Preferences, or press Command Comma to pull up the Preferences window. Under Audio Setup and the Audio Device tab, you can select your connected audio interface. So I'm going to choose my Focusrite Liquid Sapphire 56 audio interface as both my playback device and my recording device. This means that if I want to play back my audio with speakers, I have to plug the speakers into the audio interface, not into my computer. Also, the Sapphire has eight microphone inputs where I can record from. So I'll be using this device as my primary audio device throughout this course. You can also set your block size, which is more commonly called the buffer size in other DAWs. This controls how large or small the blocks of information are as they're processed. When you use a larger block size, the information is processed at a slower pace, so it's less intensive on the computer's CPU. At a smaller block size, the information is processed more rapidly, so it's more CPU intensive. From a practical standpoint, you want to use a smaller block size when recording audio because this reduces the input and output latency on the signal. Latency is the amount of time it takes for the audio to go from the microphone, through the interface, processed by the computer, and then back out again to your headphones or speakers. If you use a larger block size for recording, you'll get more latency, and this can end up sounding like a noticeable delay while recording. So why use a larger block size at all then? Well, like I said before, it's less CPU intensive, but it also allows you to use more plugins and effects when you're mixing and editing your song. So to sum this up, I typically use a smaller block size when recording to reduce latency, and a larger block size after I'm done recording when I want to edit and mix my audio. So for now, I'll set this right in the middle at 256 samples. Let's check in on the inputs and outputs on my audio interface. To do this, I'll click on Song Setup down here. And then under the Audio I.O. Setup tab, you can view the inputs and outputs on your audio interface. And you can also assign and route them from here. Now under my Outputs tab, you can see I have 10 line level outputs. One and two are the monitor outputs, and the rest are just additional line outputs. I won't be using those, so I'll just leave this alone, and I'll make sure that my speakers are connected to the monitor outputs one and two on the back of my interface. Under the Inputs tab, you can see that I have eight microphone inputs labeled IP1 through IP8. At some point, I'll be using all eight of these simultaneously for recording a drum kit, so I want to make sure that all eight are available to me. So I'll select and then delete the three that are currently here, and then create eight mono inputs by clicking the Add Mono button eight times. You can also make this setting the default setting for all future songs by clicking here. Then I'll click OK to confirm. To test this out, I'll double click here or press T to bring up the Add Tracks dialog. I'll create a new audio track, and I'll make sure that the input is set to input 1 on my interface. You can click and drag the bottom of the track header to expand it. Right now I have a condenser mic hooked up to channel 1 on my audio interface, so I'll just make sure to have phantom power turned on, and then I can click on the input monitor or arm for recording buttons to start monitoring that input. Check 1, 2, check 1, 2, so it sounds like it's picking up the mic just fine. Now, if you're using a different mic on a different input, you can assign any of the eight mono inputs we created here. And you can also go back to the audio I.O. setup again by clicking here.